This conference yes. will now be recorded. Welcome back to Naveen Automation, guys. This is Naveen here. So this is the part number two for our keyword-driven framework. And in keyword-driven, we have already seen the basic diagram in the first series, I mean, in the first session, sorry, that we have to create a base page and then we have to write this execution data on the basis of different locators and everything. And then uh, we will write this execution engine. So in this particular uh, session, I'm going to cover a couple of things. We will see how exactly we can uh, we can write the code for these components, right? So let's start. So what I'm going to do that I'll be creating a Maven project quickly from the beginning that uh, we will create a Maven project. So just, and I have already explained so many times that how to create a Maven project. So you just need to create a Maven project. And let's see my Maven project name is keyword driven. I'm going to take one application hubspot.com. So this is keyword driven hubspot like this, right? Hubspot like this, yeah. So you can maintain the group ID, artifact ID, same and click on finish. So you will see that keyword driven hubspot got created. And under that some dummy packages got created under SRC main Java and SRC test Java. I'm going to delete these uh, packages because I'll be creating my own packages, so I don't need them. And same thing for SRC test Java as well. So I'm going to delete them. After that, you see that if you have JRE 1.5, you need to add JRE 1.8. So in my Eclipse, sometimes it takes by default 1.5. So I'll convert into JRE 1.8. So just remove it. Add the library once again, GRE system library, Java 1.8, I'll add, apply and OK. After that, I need to add my Selenium code. So what I'm going to do, I'll go to my form.xml file. I don't need this particular JUIT, so I'm going to remove it. And uh, I'll take the Selenium stuff from here. So I'll be adding. Uh, Excel file also, so I need Apache Poi API. So I need Apache Poi API, I need TestNG, I need Selenium. These three important uh, jars dependencies we have to add. So I'll do one thing, I'll take it from some different package where all the dependencies are there. And uh, if you want, I can send you the link to get all these dependencies. So you can check in the description, I'll send all the dependencies link over there. So I'll do one thing in my from a different project, I'll do, I'll take some, uh, all the format XML file from there. So I open this format XML and uh, because I really don't want to waste the time, check it on Google and then do it again. So this is the Selenium dependency. This is a test change dependency. And all these are Apache Poi API dependency. So I'll just copy paste all these Apache Poi API dependency from here. So just copy paste and copy and then paste it over there, right? And I'm going to delete the previous, I mean, some different project dependency from here. Form the file, it's done. And then go back to my main project. Fine. So, this is the dependency, guys, I have added. And uh, after that, under SRC main Java, I'll create first my config.properties file, right? So, I'll create a package over here. Let's see the package name is quickly. I'll write com.qa.hubspot. So, let's see hubspot hs. Dot this is your keyword driven so i'll write let's see some name like this keyword dot config package inside this particular config package i'll do one thing i'll create one more one class over there sorry one file that is your config dot properties file how to read properties file and all such stuff i have already explained earlier so config dot properties file i have written inside the properties file we know that okay some different properties like browser is equal to Chrome, your URL is equal to whatever the URL is, HTTP, w, I can app dot whatever the URL you are going to use. We use this particular application, it's double forward slash, and we'll directly land on login page. After that, I'll have this username. So I have this username that Naveen animation20 at gmail.com, and the password is test at the rate one, two, three, four, right? 
and then browser equal to Chrome. I'll maintain one more property that if headless is equal to yes or no. So by default, it will be no. I don't want to execute in headless mode. Right. So these are the three, four, five properties I have written over there. After that, the most important thing, guys, I'll be creating my base page class. So I'll create one package com dot qa dot of this port hs dot keyword dot and let's see my package name is uh, base package <coughs> right and uh, yeah so this is my base package under this particular base package i'm gonna create one java class my java class name is let's see base okay only base so this is my class click on finish this class is responsible for uh, your driver execution and all those things so what I'm going to do that I'm going to maintain one public web driver reference over here because I need to create my reference, right? My web driver reference and then import this particular web driver. Same thing I'll maintain like for properties file also because I'm going to read my properties from here. So prop also I'm going to use import this properties from java.util package. So if you see according to the diagram, we have this base page we have to initialize in it means initialize driver and init initialize your properties file right and uh, what else after that after that i'm going to create one method my method name is let's see public okay void my method name is initialize your driver so in it the driver method i'm going to create and this particular initialize driver will accept one browser okay name so on the basis of which browser you want to initialize your web driver let's say i want to pass so i'll pass google chrome i'll pass firefox or whatever so on the basis of that my driver will be initialized so quickly i'll do that i'll define my system property for google chrome so if it is google chrome so i'll write one if condition if if your browser so as of now let's say i'm using only google chrome. if it is equal to chrome then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do system dot set property that the driver dot chrome dot driver, right? And we all know that that how to set the property. And right now my Chrome driver is available in my downloads folder. So right now I'm just giving the hard coded values like this. It's available in my users folder. My username is the input data slash downloads slash room driver right if you are using windows machine you know that you have to write dot exe file so these things guys i'm not going to cover because these are the very basic things that i have covered so many times in my previous videos so please watch those videos okay after that what i'm going to do i'm going to do one thing that if right if whatever the property I'm going to check prop dot get property right which property your headless property because you remember I maintain one headless property over here because if your browser mode is headless if it is headless then what do you do if it is headless one minute browser dot get property and string key is this and yeah dot if it is equal to yes right then only you have to write the headless code right then then only you have to activate the headless mode so how we'll do that in headless we have to use chrome options class so let's see my chrome options is equal to new chrome options class i'll create so this is also a topic i have already covered guys earlier and this chrome options import and then after that options dot add argument and your argument name is hyphen hyphen headless and then after that you have to initialize your chrome driver like this new chrome driver and then i have to pass options here very simple this is a standard thing that we have seen so many times and chrome driver you have to import if headless is equal to no let's see in your config or properties you maintain headless equal to no so it will check headless equal to no so it will not come inside the if part it will come inside the else part so i'll write else over here and then without headless 
initialize your Chrome driver. So simply Chrome driver like this, right? And then once it is, once this is done, what I'm gonna do? Once this if condition is done, and then I'll return the driver from here. So I'll simply write return driver. And if it is this particular method is returning driver, I'm gonna write the driver instead of void because void means does not return any value. Remember, we covered functions in Java. If you have seen my Java videos, if a particular function is returning driver, the driver is a type of web driver. So obviously we have to write web driver over here, right? So this is the first method I have written. Now the second method I'm gonna write it for. Okay, second method I'm gonna write for properties to read properties file. So I'll simply write public void and let's see my method name is initialize properties. Right, this is a method name, right, properties. And we know that for property, it's very simple code that properties prop equal to, properties prop is equal to new properties. Okay, new properties. And uh, then I'm gonna create file input stream class object. Let's see, IP is equal to new file input stream, right? And uh, this particular file input stream is coming from java.io package. And for which file? Where exactly your config.properties file is available? So this is available over here. So I'll take the path. So right click on it, go to properties. Take the location of this particular file and then simple paste it over there, <coughs> pass into the file input stream class constructor. Right. So this will be my okay, the complete constructor. Later on, we will remove these hard coded values, but as of now, let it be like this. And surround with try cache log if file is not available or something like this, it will give you file not found exception. And then once this is done, we have to use prop.load method. So simple prop dot load and I'll pass my ID. And again, prop dot load if during the loading, if any uh, problem is there, then add with another cache block with IO exception. So this is also done, right? So I have written two methods. One is initialize property and one is initialize driver. And this initialize property, this method will return what? It will return prop object reference. Right, so instead of void, what should I write? I have to write properties. The written type of this method is properties. Fine, so this is a good code we have written in terms of, okay, in terms of base page. Now, what we have to do is, now it's time to create one Excel file, right? So when you create the Excel file, then you will get to know that, okay, why we are doing all these things. What is the actual meaning of keyword array? So, let me show you one Excel file that I have already created. Let's see, this is my Excel file. Mm -hmm. One minute. One minute, yeah. I'll show you that Excel file. So this is the Excel file. Let's see, the Excel file name is HubSpot Scenario. And I have written four columns, test, step, locator, action, and value. Right, so these are the steps let's see i have written four columns let's see i have written and under these columns what we have to do guys you have to write your steps so for every test case i know that first we have to open the browser right so what exactly i'm going to write so this is my test step that okay open the browser for opening the browser do we need any locator no we don't need any locator but what is your action name so this is the key this is very important column name oh exactly what we will create open browser keyword okay in our code also then you will get to know that okay what is the importance of keyword driven then you will be able to relate so action let's see you can give open browser or launch browser whatever the name you want to give so i have given open browser and then what is the value chrome so tomorrow if you want to execute let's see firefox or something you can write firefox also and then let's see my scenario is for login scenario so my first scenario is like this Open the browser, launch the URL. For launching the URL also, I don't need any locator. Locator means your ID, XPath, CSS selector, and all those things, so I don't need that. Right, and 
the action key is enter the url so you can give any action key guys it's not compulsory that you have to write all these things you can give any action key but appropriate action key you have to use enter url or let's see launch url whatever the name you want to give you can give an url value after that my element is there that enter email address so we have enter email address id equal to username so if i show you this particular application this hubspot dot application you inspect this guy the first guy email address you can see input id equal to username is written over there same thing for password also you can check password is this id equal to password is written over there and for login button if you see that okay for all the three elements we have ids are available id is equal to login button right so we have these three things available in my excel file also that uh, you see enter email id enter password and click on login button and the locator see the corresponding locator so you have to maintain the format like this id equal to username tomorrow if you are using let's see by dot name so you have to use name equal to password if you want to use xpath you have to use like this xpath is equal to whatever the xpath value double slash or and the rate id equal to this or something like this email id what exactly the action you want to perform i want to perform send key section and what is the value you want to write this is the value i want to provide now for password id equal to this send keys i want to do that so ultimately click on login button this is the click login button i'm maintaining over there and what is the value for button any any means not available because for button we don't need to pass anything because this is a click so don't leave blank don't leave blank like this guys otherwise it will give you exception in apache poi api it will give you exception so you have to write na or null or whatever you want to give you just write some na na is the more appropriate word na means nothing right and then finally close the browser right so remember in test ng in page object model in data driven approach you first open the browser execute your scenario and close the browser so this is my scenario this is my test case number 1 let's see right this is my test case number 1 and then second test case also i'll tell you later so you can write multiple test cases starting with open the browser again open the browser with google chrome and launch the url and verify sign up link right verify sign up link means just click on sign up link that link text i'm using see this time i'm using i'm not using id i'm using link text is equal to sign up so i'll be using by dot link text in my code and simple dot click and then close the browser so see this thing manual testers also they can write so they will prepare this particular sheet and then they can also execute so this is a very friendly thing that okay yes you are maintaining all your scenarios in the form of proper steps okay over here right now what we have to do after that according to these actions right we have to create our keywords but we need to read this particular excel file so let's see my excel file name is login okay i have given this excel sheet name is login and i'll do one thing that uh, let me just save it on desktop first so save as desktop and uh, let me save it so it's already available on desktop i'll close this particular excel sheet and i'll go to my eclipse under eclipse what i'm going to do that this is my src main java i create a package my package name is let's see com.qa.hubspot. let's see this is my um, keyword framework keyword dot and uh, let's see this is my um, uh, what i say keyword dot this is my scenarios because all my scenarios i'll be writing over there right scenario under that particular scenarios i'll copy this particular okay excel sheet so i'll copy this excel sheet from my so i'll do one thing let me just a moment so i'll go to my desktop right so i'll go to my desktop and from the desktop i'll copy this particular of this for scenario copy this and paste it in your eclipse in this particular package simple paste it over there so you will see that yes of this for scenario dot xls is available here fine perfect now 
these are my scenarios I have written. Now I have to read this. So how will you read it now? Now this is important. So to read this thing, guys, as I told you that according to the diagram that uh, I have to create one keyword execution engine or keyword engine class. This engine will engine class will read the data from execution data Excel file, right? From the scenario Excel file. Now how to do that? So to do this thing. What I'm going to do that I'm going to create another package under SRC main Java. So let's see my package name is com.qa.hubspot.bot keyword.engine. Dot, okay, keyword.engine. Let's see. And uh, under this particular keyword.engine, I'm going to create a class. My class name is, let's see, keywordengine.java. Right? Keyword engine okay, dot java class so this class is very important keyword engine class is very important so what i'm going to write this keyword engine class first i'll define some basic things over there that uh, some basic things like i'll first define my web driver parameter the driver reference here not parameter sorry the so driver and driver right and then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create one of my properties reference also so that I can take the properties from my base page. So I'll show you how to do that. And then import these two things from respective packages. After that, I'm going to create one method over here. Guys, now see it carefully. This class is very, very important. What I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to create first variable that public one variable final string variable and where exactly your data sheet is available. It means where exactly your scenario underscore sheet path, right? That the Excel file path, where exactly is available. So let's see, I'll write scenario sheet underscore path. And uh, this is available over here in this particular package. So right click on it, go to properties capture the locator, I mean location, sorry, and then simply paste it over there. So this is my sheet, right? Excel sheet is available here. Fine. So this is a, another variable I have created. Now I'm going to create one method, guys, public void. This method is important. The method name, I'm giving some, see, some exact proper name, like a start execution. It means I'll call this particular method from my test class, okay, from test ng, and then start execution method will start executing your test cases. First, it will read the Excel file one by one, row by row, and then it will start executing it. So let's see, this is my method name, start execution. And uh, here I'll just pass from which sheet you want to start. So sheet name, right? So for every Excel file, right, we have given this particular so login sheet. Please pick the login sheet and pick all these scenarios I have written over there. All these steps I have written, right? So this is the method. Now in this particular method, what I'm going to write, I'm going to write to interact with, okay, to interact with the Excel file because this is important. So interaction with the Excel file will happen with Apache for API. So now I have to write the basic code with the help of Apache Poi API. So what I'm going to do, guys, Apache Poi API provides two important classes. One is, I mean, two important things. One is workbook and another one is sheet. So at the class level, right? So at the class level, what I'm going to do that I'm going to write public. I'll create this, uh, let's see, static. workbook book reference and this workbook is coming from see this workbook is coming from apache poi api right so this workbook is coming from apache poi api this is an interface this is an interface reference i have created okay see it's not rocket science good i'm trying my best to explain you guys so workbook and another one is <clears throat> sheet class, okay, sheet reference, sheet interface reference you have to create. So workbook means the complete workbook, the complete Excel file. Sheet means login sheet and multiple sheets are there, right? 
and this particular sheet you have to import from uh, one minute you have to import from poi ss user model so make sure you are importing from poi ss user model right so that is also done so i have created this now under this particular start execution method what i'm going to write i'm going to create one file input stream class okay reference so let's see my reference name is this and is equal to null right and import this so first i create one file stream class reference with null and this file is equal to i'm going to create the object of this particular class file input stream class over here and this file input stream class is saying that where exactly your sheet the excel sheet is available so this is my it is accepting one it is expecting one excel sheet path so this is my sheet path right and it is saying that okay please add with try catch block so don't use throw at declaration because if any exception is there we want to capture inside the catch block so surround with try catch block right so this is done so what exactly it will do it will make the connection with this particular excel sheet available on this particular location after that this is a file part after that guys we have one more class is there workbook factory class okay workbook factory dot create method is there and you just need to pass this particular file so inside the memory what exactly it will do that so first we have to make the stream connection with this particular sheet path this particular excel file and then this particular file will be created actually internally okay inside the memory and then this create again is saying surround with try catch block fine but this create let me remove this uh, comment section this create is saying that okay it will return one workbook reference so workbook reference we have already created so i'll store inside the workbook reference like this book is equal to this fine book is equal to this after that what i'm going to do so this is the book i got so ultimately my target is first i'll get the book and then from this particular book i'll get the sheet so i'll come out of this and then i'll write book dot get sheet method is there book dot get sheet so it means go to this particular location give okay create file means create file it will give you the complete workbook complete excel file from this particular excel workbook give me the sheet so what is your sheet name right so get sheet this is a sheet name that you are going to pass that login sheet so can i write like this this is my sheet name and from this particular get sheet this get sheet method will return one sheet reference so i can i store like this sheet is equal to this so what i got i got my book also workbook i got my sheet also fine makes sense after that what i'm going to do that guys now i have to read this particular excel sheet so how can you read because excel sheet the data is available from here and i have to okay read one by one first i'll read this particular line open browser open browser and start chrome then go to the line number 3 then line number 4 row number 6 5 6 7 8 9 up to the total number of row count so obviously i have to start a for loop because right so that i can use a for loop i can increase the value one by one and i every time i can capture the value from the exact row number so i have to start a for loop so what i'm going to do i'll start one for loop like this for right int i is equal to let's see i start my loop from 0 int i equal to 0 now see it very carefully guys i less than okay i less than sheet dot one method is there get last row number so this method is coming from apache by api it means i will start from i equal to 0 up to the last row number so this is a method name get last row number and then i plus plus okay i plus plus then what i'm going to do from this particular first time i equal to 0 <coughs> first time i equal to 0 what i'm going to do that do sheet dot 
okay one method is there from this particular sheet get row method is there get row from which row from ith row <clears throat> but first time guys i equal to zero first time i equal to zero i equal to zero means this is pointing to this particular first row i equal to zero means the first row but i'm not bothered about first row because the first row is the column value right my first row is column value but my actual execution data is starting from row number two so can i write like this instead of i equal to zero i'll write i plus one it means it is pointing to not to the first row it is pointing to the second row like this okay so get i plus one dot one method is there get cell method is there so don't worry nobody's going to ask such kind of questions at a time of interview this is the standard <clears throat> apache poi api code okay get cell means from which column you want to take the value so i'm gonna i'm not gonna take the column value from test step because this is just for reference this is just for plain english open the browser whatever you want to write significance a sentence you want to write you can write it over there but the actual data this is my actual data b c and d right so what i'll do for this column c column number b column c column d so what i'm do for row i'm maintaining one counter i i equal to 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to the last row but for column i'll maintain one more counter let's see k so what i'll do that i'll start one counter before the for loop i'll start one k i'll start with k equal to 0 let's see okay int k equal to 0 now see it carefully now get row get cell which cell k plus 1 as i told you k equal to 0 will point to this guy but my i have to capture the data from b from b column so i'll write k plus 1 over here right k plus 1 and simple convert that whatever the data is available dot to string and dot trim also guys i'm going to use because if any space let's see by mistake if i put any space over there or something like this automatically space will be removed with the help of trim so what exactly is going to do that sheet dot get row get row means i plus one it means the second row get cell k plus one it means to the second column whatever the value is available give me that value with the trim value right so what i'll do i'll store inside a string so it will return a string i'll write let's see this is my locator column value something like this i write this is my locator column value so this is my locator column value right now see it very very important thing i'm going to write some conditions over here that if this particular locator column value okay guys <clears throat> this particular locator column value if it is equals to or i'll write let's see equals ignore case sometimes we might write a small na or a small values or capital na or small na whatever so whatever small na or capital na you are writing it does not matter if i'm writing like this locator value equals ignore the case and whatever the string you want to use let's say one okay if it is equal to na it means whatever the value which you are taking from the excel sheet from second number row and k equal to this na is available if it is equal to na then what do you want if it is equal to na what i'll do so if it is equal to na i don't want to do anything so what I'll do instead of this, can I write like this? I'll just put not equal to like this. So what will happen? Let's see the first the first column for the first row, <clears throat> the value is NA. So value is NA condition is true, but this not will make it false. Right? This false. This will make it false. But let's see some other values available. Let's see this value ID equal to username is available. So if it is equal to username, no condition is not satisfied. It means this is false and this entire false just because of this not will become true so it will come inside the if part right so if na is there i don't want to come inside the if part so there is no point if na is there i want to ignore the if condition but when the row number equal to this row number equal to let's see four or five in that case i want to capture this data id equal to username Right, so this data, although we have already captured over here, what I want from this particular locator value, I'm gonna 
split. So this is your split function I'm using. And guys, don't change the format. See, ID is equal to user name. So I'm going to split this particular value on the basis of equal to. OK, on the basis of equal to. So if you know split function, a split will return a string array. Right. So first we will split and give me the zeroth value like this zeroth value. And then again, let's say I'm going to trim it for the safer side. Just trim the value. Right. So I have written here like this. If any, any will be ignored. Right. And let's see for ID equal to username. So the zero value will be ID and the first value will be username. So this is your locator and this is your locator value. Right. <coughs> Remember. In uh, page object model, we have to do we have to use the same ID equal to username, same thing. So this zeroth value will become your locator name. So let's see, I'll maintain some uh, uh, string parameter. So string parameter, let's see, I'll maintain at the uh, at the method level. Okay, over here, let's see that uh, I'm gonna write <coughs> string locator name is equal to none, and then string locator the value is equal to none fine so this locator name will be your locator name is equal to this so let's see the format is like this okay so this uh, this value is coming like this id is equal to username so i have already split it <coughs> right i have split it on the basis of OK, I have split it on the basis of this equal to. So ID will be the first value and the username will be the. <coughs> I mean, zeroth value and the username will be the first value. And then what I'm going to do the locator value I'm going to use. So locator value is equal to this locator value dot split split again on the basis of equal to and give me the first value dot print. So this guy will become what? This guy will become ID and this guy will become the value username and the equal to is gone. And the equal to is gone. Right? So this is the first thing guys. First you have to break. Once you break it. Now what you have to do? You have to capture other values also. <coughs> other values mean other column values action and value. So now it's time to capture action. So and maintain let's see like this. Same thing, your sheet dot get okay sheet dot get row and uh, again i plus one from the okay the starting just ignore the first row i plus one means the second row and then dot <coughs> get cell sorry one minute sorry dot get cell and cell will be your k plus two why k plus two because k plus one is your second column or k plus two means so this is your first column second column right so first time we have initialized that k equal to zero so zero means k equal to zero this is k plus one means one k plus two means this is a third column right so we have to use k plus two for the third column k plus one for the second column so k plus 2 dot two string dot make a trim so that is again i'll use let's see this is my action value so this is your action i'll get right same thing i'll get my last column value is value string value so let's see i'll maintain just copy paste so guys this code is very simple if you see the logic it's very simple it's not rocket science right so don't worry if you are not able to understand please watch that okay video once again i'm pretty much sure that you will understand it's very simple so this will be my k plus three because the last column so this is your locator column value i got a locator column value because i had to do a split why because the locator value i have written like this id equal to username id the password like this okay so let's see this is the thing <coughs> Now, once you read all the column values, you have to write switch statement, right? So how will you write the switch statement? Instead of writing if else condition, switch statement is more appropriate here. So I'll write switch 
okay so, and press control space so some <coughs> switch statement will be generated like this this is very important in keyword driven right so can you see that this switch key this is representing your key keyword that's why this is called keyword driven framework so what is your key my key is switch key means whatever the action so this is my key what is your action my action is this let's say i want to open the browser so as i told you right this action is equivalent to your key so my first action is let's see open the browser right so this will be my okay i'm expecting this switch okay action and what is the value you are expecting my first value let's see so for every key i have to create a key in my case as a case i have to create switch case case is open the browser like this right and uh, what exactly you want to do after that so let me check what is the error it's saying okay Compile it to 1.7. Fine. Okay, so switch action open the browser. After that, if the case is open the browser, so how will you open the browser? To open the browser, we have to write web driver driver equal to new Chrome driver. Remember, in that code we have already written inside the base class. Inside the base class, we have already written this initialized driver. So I'll call this particular initialized driver <coughs> initialized driver method. So how will you call it? For that, I need to create the object of base class. So right, so what I'm going to do that uh, at the class level, okay, at the class level, let's see, I'm going to create one public base base class reference over here, and then simple import this. Okay, simple import this, and uh, this base, I'll come inside this. I'll write like this if case is equal to open the browser is equal to new base is equal to new base right why I'm calling why I'm creating the object of this particular class because now I have to call the method of base page class right the base class and once I do it simple I'll write base dot whatever the method is there initialize your driver initialize your driver right base dot initialize driver but before that guys what we have to do we have to use one more method that base dot initialize properties this is important so first you need to maintain the sequence base dot initialize the property initialize the property what exactly it will do it will make the connection with your config dot properties file and it will return a prop reference a prop class or a prop object so can i write like this prop is equal to this so that's why i have created this particular prop here right this property prop reference and i'm capturing the same reference over here <coughs> prop is equal to base dot init underscore properties fine once this is done what i'm going to do let me delete this here. now see very carefully once this is done i'll write one more if condition if okay what if if means if let's see sometime what happens that okay let's see we forgot to write the chrome value over here let's see this is blank like this so what do you want if it is blank or na or let's see we have written na right if it is blank or na whatever let's see sometimes we forgot to add if it is not the value is not available here so then please take the value from config.properties right so as i told you earlier in the previous set in the first uh, part the browser equal to chrome it is available and then the value is not available here so your selenium code or your java code will pick the value from here from browser equal to chrome from here if it is available inside this then you can take it from here right so as of now let's see i'll taking from here only chrome now i'll go back to my code see guys you have to understand this thing very carefully what I'm saying this, this particular value that we have already captured value means the last column value, last column value. <clears throat> if the value, what I'm saying in Excel file in that particular column, if it is empty, so I'll simple write, if it is empty or, or, right, or value dot, let's see, sometimes we write value dot equals NA. 
if it is empty or by mistake let's see we have written na over here in that case what do you want if it is equal to this then please pick the property value from from where from config dot properties so can i write like this that base dot initialize your driver and what is your browser name my browser name this time will come from properties file so simply i'll use prop dot get property browser right prop dot get property browser property name is browser so right now it is chrome so we will pass chrome over here because for initialize a driver we need browser name and on the basis of that it will compare if it is equal to chrome then initialize your chrome and same thing we can write it for firefox also over here right so this is only when in excel file you have written some blank value or any value if it is empty or blank fine but let's see in excel file you have written something so it this condition will not be satisfied so it will come inside the else part then what i'm going to do so this initialize driver will return web driver so can i write like this i store inside the driver so i got my driver from here right so that's why this driver i have already declared over here at the class level so that's why i have declared inside the keyword driven engine class level okay so this is also done so driver equal to base dot initialize driver else simple driver is equal to base dot initialize driver if the column value is available in excel file so what is the value this particular value we will pick and we will write it over there fine this is a column value okay and once this is done i got my web driver and then break it it means this is a statement of switch case in java that switch first case is done then simple break it <coughs> okay so similarly guys we have to create multiple cases my now my second case is i'll write case what is my second case so for every case you have to write like this enter the url it means my second case is enter the url what do you want if it is again let's see same thing you have written the okay you have not written anything over here it means if in excel file the url value is blank so please take it from config dot properties the same thing i'll do it over here as well that if the value is okay I'll simply write if the value is empty. In that case, what I'm going to do? I'll simply write if the value is empty. Then can I write like this? Driver dot get method. Now launch the URL. Okay, which URL? Prop dot get property. And my URL value is this. That URL property it is coming from config dot properties. and then else okay else what do you want otherwise driver dot get whatever the value we are getting from the excel file this you are so we have to okay maintain guys both the conditions if it is blank then we have to take it from config properties otherwise we can take it from okay excel file so this is also done right so these are the browser specific so what else we have browser specific let's see we have quit also so i'll write one more quit so for send keys okay for send keys i'll do a different thing so just remember first we have to write for open browser keyword enter your keyword and the quit keyword we have to write in the form of okay like this in, in the form of switch case statement so i'll write another case what is my case case is if is equal to quit now guys if you have written this particular case over here right open browser now you cannot change the value here you have to write the exact key over here otherwise it will be a mismatch and then it will not execute this particular step so make sure whenever you are writing any particular action or key the same key you have to use it over here as well and these are not your hard coded keys so so this is done so one more thing whenever a case is created you have to break the case also so i have to write break the case okay now the third case is what my third case is quit 
This is just like case, case number, open browser, case, enter URL, and then case quit. If the case is quit, what do you want? I want to quit the browser, simple driver dot, quit the browser. So the browser okay, will be quit, the browser will be closed, and then I want to break the case. So break the case. Right, and then we have this default break means if nothing, if let's see, there is no other action that we have written, in that case, it's simple, right? Default break. So default break is important. If nothing, I mean, I mean, if you're not passing any case with this, which is equal to open browser or enter URL or quit, it will directly it will come over here, default, and then break the switch statement. Right? So this is the first switch statement, guys. We have written from here to here. Now we have to write it for another switch statement. Then see. I'll write switch. Okay, now what is your key? My key is this time my key will be <clears throat> what is your locator? On the basis of locator, I'll write my switch case. So what is my key? What is the key is key is your locator name. So locator name is sometimes it will be ID, sometimes it will be name, class name, like this. So this is my locator name. And what is a locator name? So locator name, if it is coming as ID right in double quotes here right if the case is id then what do you want if the case is id i'll simple write okay what exactly i'll do i'll simple write okay one minute yeah so i'll simple write driver dot find element by dot id and what is the id value you are getting so id value is what the locator value so, right so this is locator name is your id if this id is this case equal to id this locator name is id right this id will be matched with this particular case id if it is equal to this then by dot id your locator value and what do you want okay so i got my what i got my one web element over there so can i write like this driver dot find element and store in a particular web element Let's see, element is equal to this, right? And then simple import this particular web element over here. But on this particular web element, what do you want? Do you want to perform send keys or you want to do a dot click? Because for send keys, all ID also I can use it for send keys in the same, okay? On the same element, I can do a dot click also, right? So we have to, with the ID, we have to maintain dot click as well as send keys both. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to write one if condition over there. If, right, now send keys and all these things are coming from here, from the action. So if the action value is equal to send keys, right, <clears throat> so action we have already captured over here, this action value, okay, from this particular column dot equals, okay, I simple write dot equals ignore case whatever the send keys you are writing in capital letter or small letter in excel file that doesn't matter if it is equal to send keys okay it is equal to send keys what i'm gonna do i'm gonna okay use send keys so i simple write this particular element dot send keys and whatever the value you want to pass so what is the value you want to pass I want to pass right this value Naveen animation 20 at gmail.com and this value is coming from this particular value attribute we have already captured from this particular k plus 3 statement right so I'm passing this particular value over there fine so this is the element dot send keys I have written <coughs> okay so this is for send keys but what if there is a click there is a button that is also having some ID. So for ID, we have to maintain guys, both the conditions, send keys as well as dot click. So right, I'm gonna write else if. Okay, else if action dot equals ignore case. If the action is equal to this click action. Okay guys, if the action is equal to click, then what do you want? I want element dot click. 
right so for send keys what i'm going to do that for for every uh, text field before sending key <coughs> sending the key i want to do a clear also so element dot clear okay element dot clear and then pass the send keys if it is equal to click then dot key and then once this case is done simple break the case simple break the case same thing you can write the cases for name also xpath also like that so let's say i'm not writing anything for all the cases otherwise it will take a lot of time right so case is the id let's see we have one more case is this that's uh, that's uh, your case is let's see mm, link text right sometimes we are passing id sometimes we are passing xpath equal to this or link text so i'll give you an example of link text also so let's see my another case is this if your case is link text right exact case guys you have to write whatever the case name you have given link text is equal to sign up it's already broken with the split function okay so link text will be a locator name sign up will be a locator value right so if it is equal to link text what i'm going to do if it is equal to link text then again i'm going to create the web element so i'll go to create the web element driver dot find element and with the help of by dot link text i'll be using and uh, whatever the locator value that you are passing <clears throat> so i'll do one thing that i'll create one web element at the class level so that the same web element i can use okay. so public web element element and this same element i'll be using over here so i'm going to remove this thing from here okay so element is equal to driver dot find element like this okay this is also done so a driver element equal to driver dot find element by dot <coughs> link text so i'll get the element and what do you want so this is a link so i want to click on it so i simply use element dot click once this is clicked my case is over i'll simply break it <coughs> i'll simply break it one more thing guys before breaking it especially for locator name what i want especially for locator name just once this is done just make it to null because this part this locator name is gone <coughs> the locator name is done for this particular case so once the entire case is done locator name equal to null just make it null so that the same locator equal okay can be used for some other cases so okay guys it's not very straightforward i told you right initially as compared to page object model but this is really cool stuff i'm telling you this is a different you remember that i used to tell you guys that keyword driven is not that famous because it's a lot of maintenance but the way i am designing this is like amazingly good stuff i'm telling you this is a very robust and very generic code and we will make it more and more generic in future please try to understand please okay try to learn what exactly i'm covering and then i'm pretty much sure please practice keep watching this video again and again write your code by your own in your eclipse then you will get to know what exactly i'm doing so let's say i'm not going to write for id uh, i'm not going to write for name xpart and all similarly we can write for other locators as well for class name csc selector and xpart right everything so let's see as of now we have written all these things here so this is your keyword engine is completed so this method is very important and it's coming from the for loop over here from here to here so inside the single for loop <clears throat> okay i have to write the entire code so first we will read the data i'll repeat quickly so we will read the three four column values three column values my first column i'm not bothered about it and bother about locator action value so first i capture locator action value and locator i'll maintain na and id equal to this <clears throat> so first i'll maintain the na if it is not equal to na then break with split with the on the basis of equal to so that i can get my locator name and locator value like this id and use the name separately and then action and value and on the basis of action for especially for browsers i'll maintain like open the browser enter the url and quit the browser so 
in this particular switch i have written three cases then i'll write another switch for my locator so two types of switches you have to write one switch for your browser and another switch is for your locator and locator for all the seven eight locators that we have id name x pass cs selector and all we have to write for the different locators so that you can do it maybe i can do it later but not in the session so this is also done right so after that guys what we have to do this is everything is done i'm going to create <clears throat> my keyword engine is done base page is done configure properties is done now it's time to execute this particular code that how exactly it is working so how to execute this so i'll do one thing under this src test java i'll create one package my package name is let's see com.qa.hubspot.test and under that particular test package i'll create one test ng class okay so let's see my class name is uh, this is a login scenario so let's see this is my login <coughs> test click on finish and here we don't need to write any at the end before and at the end after right in keyword driven better to avoid because there is no point in at the end before we have already launched the url inside the case switch case statement at the end after also quit the browser we have already made the inside the switch statement so here you just need to directly start with your at the end test annotation that's it at the end test public void let's see this is my login test scenario okay login test scenario now guys what will happen see it very carefully login test scenario and then we need to import this one minute okay convert to junit annotations so this is the jun oh sorry um, test ng annotation not junit and then what we have to do we just need to call this method now start execution method is very important to me that's the <clears throat> main core fundamental right remember that this is the core engine execution engine is the main thing so we will call this particular execution engine which will read the data from excel file okay and then it will execute your test cases in this particular order that you have written inside the excel file right so what i'll do this is start execution and write so first i create the object of keyword engine class right so i'll do one thing and like this public keyword engine i'll create one reference over here import and this keyword engine keyword engine in this particular keyword engine i'll write like this is equal to new keyword engine right and i simple call which method dot start execution method from which sheet now we just need to write the sheet name which sheet from login sheet okay so let's see login sheet over here that's it okay later on we will see how can we write assertions and all those these things later but as of now just <clears throat> see how exactly it is working right so start execution we will pass this login sheet it will come over here sheet name is login it will read the data so first see as i told you right it will read the data from excel sheet according to the diagram remember i see quickly i'll repeat execution engine we will call this method <clears throat> available in this particular execution engine which will read the data from this excel file and then in this particular sequence what is the sequence that we have written in this particular sequence it will execute your test cases so how many test cases we have two test cases open the browser enter username password id click on login button close the browser again open the browser launch the url verify sign up link and close the browser so two test cases i have written for every test case open the browser close the browser open the browser close the browser that's why you don't need to maintain in any before method or after method in your test class okay so now let's see it is working or not let's see if any error is there we will try to debug and quickly let's see 
Okay, so fine, perfect. See, okay, it is launching something, but it got failed. So it is not working. So let's see what is the problem. So in console, we will see null pointer exception somewhere where it is coming keyword engine 90. Locator name is null. Maybe let's see. Login test Java 14 and uh, just a minute, let me check quickly. <coughs> Maybe something we have missed or not. Locator name. So I'll do one thing. I'll put one debugger over here at line number 58 and we will try to debug. See guys, we have written the entire code, but we now it's time to debug. Let's see if it is working or not. So I'll just write in debug mode. So run it in debug mode and uh, see browser is launching. It means till here it is working. And uh, okay, it got failed. One minute. So let me put the debugger immediately, the beginning of the method. Let's do it again. <coughs> Fine, and we will one by one keep F, pressing F6. This is done. This is also done. So making the connection with Burbo is not a problem. This is fine. Now first time k equal to zero, i equal to zero. <clears throat> now let's see. Locator column value. So locator column value we are getting first is na. Locator column value is na only. If you see your Excel file, see this is na only. Locator column value first value is na. So this is fine. Okay. If it is equal to array, then don't come inside it. So it will come over here and action and value. So for action, we are getting open the browser, open browser and the value is Chrome. Okay. So action is open the browser. So it will jump on this particular case, open the case. It will initialize the property. Okay. We will get this prop and inside this prop, <clears throat> but browser name we have already defined inside Excel file. So it will not come inside this if part. So it will directly go to the else part and then it will launch the browser. So yes, browser is getting launched, which is fine. After launching the browser, again, press F6. Okay, case is broken. It will jump to the next switch. Now, what is the locator name? Locator name is null, okay. Locator name is null, exactly. This is the problem that we have done because locator name we have already declared over here with none, right? So what I'm gonna do, just a minute. I'll do one thing. Start execution locator name. One minute, guys. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so just a minute, let me run it again. This login test, right click on it and run as test in G. So here we are launch, it is launching the browser, but it is throwing one exception, that null pointer exception. Okay, I got it. See, the problem here is guys, that locator name initially is null. Remember, because once the switch action is completed, it will come over here. Right, but the locator name is null actually initially, right? Because once the NA is there, these locator name could not be initialized. So what I'm gonna do <clears throat> that I'm writing one try catch block just to avoid this particular null pointer exception. So this is my try block, and uh, once this is done, I'll write one catch block here. So catch exception E like this. Okay. And uh, what exactly it's saying? Okay, let's add one more. Yeah. <clears throat> now let's run it again and let's see. My browser should be launched. So let me close all the Chrome browser that we have already opened. I have already opened so many browsers. Let me open, close all the browsers and then let's run it again. Okay. So just a minute. Yep. One minute, guys. 
This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So let me do one thing. What exactly I have done that uh, this is my try block because of null pointer exception. And I have captured the entire, if any null pointer exception is coming, put inside the try block and put inside, okay, handle it inside the catch block. Now let's run it. I think now it should work fine. So let me run as test ng. Now you will see, guys, browser is getting launched. Yes. And uh, yes, entering the username password, clicking on login button, again opening the browser and clicking on sign up link and close the browser. See. Right. So, whatever that code that you have written, whatever the things you have written over here, it will do the exact same thing over there as well. <clears throat> right. So this is called keyword driven. I know this is like little uh, confusing, not confusing exactly, a lot of uh, permutation, computation that you have to write because of um, you have to read the locator action and accordingly you have to adjust your if else conditions over there. But it looks a little tough, but I'm telling you it's very easy and see your test case got passed, right? So main, this is your keyword engine. So if you want that I can publish this particular code, I'll write this uh, code to my Git repository and um, you can check this code and just have a look i'm pretty much sure that guys you will be liking it this is like really good stuff okay now you can give this particular excel sheet to anyone you can write n number of uh, <clears throat> okay uh, test steps over there make sure that okay you have to write the proper locator x path is equal to this and whatever the action you want to do that and the same action should be available in your execution engine file one more thing, if send keys is already created, so you don't need to create one more send keys because the same send keys will be taken care by the switch case statement. Okay, I know this is a very long hour session. It happened because I cannot leave in between. But in the next session, I'll tell you some more examples, some more keywords uh, we will create. So now you got to know why this is called keyword driven because all these are keys and we have written the respective keys okay, over there in more over here like this. These are my keys. So this is called keyword driven framework. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate that you waited for this long hour. And but I tried my best. You can see that okay, at around it's 1:30 in the night in India, in Bangalore. I still I'm preparing this video. So please watch this video once again and uh, please implement it. Let me know if you have any issues with that. Thank you so much and good night.